All right, so breaking news, it's official. Ogan Paul is back. And yes, we knew he was going to be fighting on the prime card, but we didn't know his opponent. At least we didn't know for sure until today. The reincarnation of the bad guy. Well, they're both kind of bad dudes. But Logan versus the one and only Dylan, the people say, ducked KSI, doesn't fight until he does. Dennis. <laughs> and we have to break this whole thing down. Why Dylan is the right pick here. Why I do think he's going to make the walk this time. And why this may push the prime card into astronomical numbers we've never seen before in influencer boxing. Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis is the fight. Is it the right one? And more importantly, is it competitive? The breakdown... Let's go. All right, so first off, Dylan Dennis is the right pick here. I know people are concerned about him pulling out and not making the walk. We're going to talk about that in a second. But for the history of what Dylan Dennis and Logan Paul and Jake Paul and KSI and Conor McGregor have all gone through, Dylan is kind of the link between all four, right? He is the only tangible thing between him and Conor McGregor, right? The training partners. They train together for years. He's cornered Conor a couple times. That guy is solidified as someone that people know in the combat sports scene. There's also been an arrival of sorts with Logan and Jake. Remember he was doing the fucking side of the road minivan savory treats shop show with Brendan Schaub a couple of years back and Jake Paul rolled up on him, was throwing the toilet paper. Dylan had come off knee surgery and he was trying to run down the fucking truck like that was gonna happen but there was that and of course he was supposed to fight ksi we still don't exactly know what happened there and why he didn't take that fight it was just a weird thing he didn't have a coach he didn't train he wasn't on weight and then the weight issues with the rehydrate it was a lot of weird stuff but essentially dylan has ties to everyone in this scene and either you want to see him beat logan which is probably a very small percentage of people to be honest like people really want to see dylan danis get his ass whipped and he calls himself the bad guy after the moniker of chael sonnen who he has studied to the absolute teetotal titty as to how to be someone that people hate and i would say chael morphed that into being someone people love that people wanted to watch the bad guy it was almost like an anti-hero with chael whereas people know they genuinely fucking hate Dylan Dennis. like no one likes it so this was the perfect pick because if you are trying to bring logan in you do want to make him a baby face you do want to make him alongside ksi the two big shining heroes of this card right ksi the massive underdog to tommy but the one that people want to see win that fight or at least that's what it's going to be for the most part logan coming back in off of I guess it's two to almost two and a half years now. You want to give him a fight. One, he can win. And two is something that's going to make him look good should he win, right? You almost erase all of Logan's bad things with a win versus Dylan Dennis. I hate to say it that way. It's not going to erase it for me. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like you can separate the fighter from the person. If Logan beats Dylan, it will be a victory, not just for Logan, but for everyone because they hate Dylan. But like I said in the intro, this is a massive move to make the prime card probably the biggest one we'll ever see in influencer boxing outside of a KSI versus Jake or you know one of those mega star fights where two people with that massive beef come together and make just an astronomical card. This one is going to be massive because of the two headliners, Logan and KSI. Logan in the co-main, I don't care what you say, there is no such thing as a double main event. There's one guy in the main event and there's one guy in a co-main. One dude walks last, one dude walks not last. It's just how combat sports works. It's, it's not, there's no such thing. But it doesn't really matter because what Logan and Dylan are going to bring here is a little bit of the special sauce. And I'm not talking about what I give your girl on the nightly. Sorry. Don't know what happened there. But as far as this fight goes and why Dylan is the right pick, because he has like this weird way of continuing to remain someone that people talk about regardless if he fights or not. It's just, it continues to be the case. People talk about Dylan Danis, whether it's the scammy crypto stuff or the fake giveaways or the fact that he calls out everyone after a fight. He's very much taken that Conor McGregor route. A big fight happens. He's on Twitter immediately calling the person out. Even though he doesn't fight them, now he has that opportunity. But again, it keeps him talked about. And then you add on to it that now Conor McGregor is interacting with misfits on Twitter. He's quote tweeting and saying the return of Dylan Danis. That again brings that tied in MMA audience back to the fold and went, oh, okay, we actually don't like Dylan either. We want to see him get his ass beat. So now you're bringing in different audiences from the influencer side, MMA side, potentially the WWE with Logan Paul because he's now gone over there and is a spectacular wrestler. Logan Paul is picking up wrestling and has become one of the better athletes in wrestling that I've ever seen. And not just the athletic side, but the storytelling side and the working of the crowd, like all of it. He's doing it better than I've ever seen anyone do it quicker than I've seen people do it. This is scary how good he is at this. And Tommy Fury bringing the you know rub from KSI and I guess potentially some of the pro boxing scene because of the Fury name. KSI bringing all of the UK 
This is a recipe for an absolute banger of a car. And before we even talk about how the fight goes, we do have to talk about the big elephant in the room. Dylan Dennis potentially pulling out of the fight, right? It was, again, one of those weird situations where when it came to the KSI fight, he was saying there were some iffy things in the contract and there was weight issues and things like that. But I think it came out that he was just specifically Dylan having a hard time making the weight, not being prepared, not having a coach and potentially still struggling with his knee injury that we do have to give credence to. Like, apparently, this ACL recovery has been brutal for the guy, and you hate that because like to have an ACL reconstruction, it not work, and then have to go have another surgery on it, you feel for the guy. That fucking sucks. But you do have to have some sort of contingency plan in place here for Dylan. As much as it's one of those things that no one wants to see happen, you do have to prepare for the worst here. Because if you don't take note of history, if you don't learn from the mistakes of the past, they are doomed to repeat themselves. Okay, so update. Uh, I'm in New Mexico for Bare Knuckle FC 48. Bryce Hall's about to fight by the time you see this. And I also have some updates, not the drink because I didn't bring it, but about the Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis pullout situation. Apparently, the contingency plan is in place. Logan does have a backup opponent for Dylan Dennis should Dylan pull out of this fight, and it is none other than Hasim the Rock Rockman Jr. This is is a big time pick. In fact, I think some people want to see this fight more than they want to see Logan versus Dylan. I'm just saying, Logan has talked openly about how he's the better boxer than Jake, his his younger brother, and how people avoid him because of this thing, which I think is horseshit, but he has a chance to prove that. Again, now again, this is all contingency plan because Dylan is still the opponent, and the way he's promoting this fight as of right now is a little tiptoe on the line, a little risque, but I might have a separate video for that. So, like I said, Hasim Rahman Jr. is the backup opponent here. Apparently, there's a $100,000 contingency plan as far as if Dylan pulls out, he's going to have to pay a fine. And there's like a doctor that's going to review any medical issues that Dylan would have leading up to this fight. Like, they, they've taken care of it. Fair play to Misfits on this one. They have really taken care of Dylan potentially pulling out of this thing. Conor McGregor's even told Ariel Helwani on his show that, that Dylan will not pull out. And in fact, he will go in and win. So again, we're talking about very, very last resort. Rock Jr. and Logan, but there is a history here, right? Yes, Rock was supposed to fight Jake Paul, and that didn't work out. The weight issues there, Rock didn't make the weight. Jake decided not to go forward with the event, but there was talk between Logan and Rock Jr. as far as what was going to happen if they saw each other in person, and I think even Logan said it's on site, which is funny because it was on site. Misfits number one, they were both in the same spot. I was there watching it go down. Rock tried to go over and confront Logan. Security got in the way. And then Logan came to watch Rock Jr. So I guess when Logan said it was on site, all he really meant was that he was a fan of Rock Jr.'s. And it was a sight to behold watching him fight. <laughs> I'm playing, but there is some history here. Yes, this beef is a little raw, kind of like my chest and skin after running in the New Mexico sun for a 10 minutes yesterday. I'm that pale. But there is something there. So I think Misfits has done a great job with not only securing the Dylan Dennis fight, making sure he makes that walk, and if by some reason he can't, the backup is just as good. If not, better. Well done to Misfits. Back to the video. Like I said, Logan and Dylan Dennis, it's the fight. It's official. I know I've already pissed people off by saying I think there's a better chance Dylan beats Logan and KSI beats Tommy, and I didn't say it to mean that Dylan's going to beat Logan. In fact, I didn't even say it to mean that Dylan has an astronomically better chance. In fact, it's like a 10% chance I put it out. But the people that heard that don't actually watch the videos. They just see clips or titles, and they run with narratives, and then cry about things they didn't even watch or hear or understand. So let's talk about what happens between Dylan Dildo Dennis and Logan Zookeeper Bald Brain Paul. I think Logan should win this fight. I, I genuinely think this is his comeback to influencer boxing to get his first and potentially only win. I don't think Logan's going to be boxing for very long. So this is going to be the one that rectifies all the losses and puts him in the, the best light to say he's got to win. And genuinely, this is his best opportunity to do that because the rest of the field is getting better. And we are getting guys into this scene that are taking it more seriously and dedicating more time than he physically can to the sport. So this is the one he needs to get a win. And talent-wise, yes, he's a far better boxer than Dylan Danis is. Dylan is not 
great with the hands. And of course, there are factors here like can Logan come back and knock off some of the ring rust from two years off? What does this gas tank look like over, I'm assuming will, will be eight rounds because his last one was, and how his conditioning and cardio has been prepared for wrestling and not necessarily boxing. Has he improved on his game any? Will he even need to to beat Dylan Dennis? All these questions we can get into at a further date. I just think Looking at it on the surface, Logan should win this fight. He's a better boxer. He has a nice jab off the back foot. Logan does set traps, or at least he did in the KSI fight. It's kind of fucking tough to set a trap for Floyd Mayweather, who's like the Indiana Jones of boxing at this point. Like, you're not raiding any sort of lost arc with him. He's, he's seen it all. So yeah, Logan has pretty much every statistical boxing advantage outside of, again, the variables. Like, we don't know what we don't know with Dylan. Like, what does he look like in an actual boxing match? I don't think Dylan's a big-time power puncher, but... Do we get like a Nate Diaz-esque performance where he is just constantly trying to smother you with pressure? And if that's the case, does that even benefit him more than it benefits a guy like Logan, who we've seen be able to step back on the back foot, unload the uppercut, and send KSI to the fucking moon? We're going to have to see because there is that risk if you are, Dylan. You're going to have to incur getting into the fire with Logan and making him throw to then get to that clinch. I think it's the biggest point for Dylan. Get to the clinch, right? Work inside. Do what Nate had spurts of success with with Jake, but Logan not being a big volume puncher, Dylan may have more success in. And again, you're catching a guy that is coming back off of a two-year layoff, hasn't ever really experienced what it takes to win yet, and he may just be susceptible enough to where Dylan's lack of boxing skill, but his ability to fight might make all the difference. I know the comparisons are going to be to Ben Askren or Nate Diaz, and, and I can understand all that, and that may very well be what happens, that Dylan just comes in, doesn't know how to box, and gets fucking flatlined. But if there is anyone that's going to be caught with something a little bit unorthodox, and a little bit unconventional to a guy like Logan, who's already been susceptible to it with KSI. Again, different fighters, KSI had ridiculous power and made Logan a little gun-shy, but there is something to be said for Dylan not necessarily showing a ton on camera and then coming into this thing potentially with that what-if factor, like what happens when he gets in there, what does he look like? No one really knows yet, outside of what he showed in MMA in like some 13-second clips. So that's, I think, where we leave it for now. We're going to do more breakdowns as we see more footage and as I'm sure KSI and Logan team up for some fucking prime boxing training videos and some transformation from both KSI and Logan where they both look like they're Optimus Prime and I'll deliver those videos like Amazon Prime for all of you guys as well. But until then, let's leave it here. Logan should win this fight. And to be frank, he kind of needs to. I don't know if I see Logan fighting many more times after this fight anyway, but if, and it's a big if, Logan and Dylan do make that walk, and Dylan is able to get over on Logan, that, ladies and gentlemen, is what you call a spoiler to the party. I'm not saying that's what happens because I genuinely don't think it will, but Logan versus Dylan Dennis is official. Doesn't mean it's going to happen until we see both guys in the ring, but this is a massive fight as far as the eyes it brings because of Logan, of course, but also a little bit because of Dylan Dan. They got this one right. Fair play to Misfits for it. And for the entire Prime card, it's shaken out to be, if not one of, maybe the biggest card we will ever see in Influencer Boxing. But as far as what happens, like I said, I don't have those answers. But October 14th on the Prime card, Logan versus Dylan Danis is official. So I guess we'll find out.